Hey, I'm Marco. I'm a former pro opera singer turned voice actor. And today we're going to look at La Signora from Genshin Impact. I don't know anything about this. I'm going into this completely blind. I think I've listened to this piece one time. Let's just dive right in. We love a buildup. Strings. Piano. Piano doubling with the strings. Woodwinds. Isn't it interesting how some woodwind instruments like the clarinet, they usually don't play anything too like ominous or nefarious. Something about this, it's almost like there's a trickster or tricky kind of sound. It's, it's almost like something is happening, like a, like someone's being swindled or there's some sort of some sort of magical or fantastical thing happening in the game. I'm really intrigued by this, again, outside of the context of the video game. You hear that real opera? That's cool. Isn't that interesting? There is that section, doo, 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 and then uh, when the men come in, the harp is playing underneath. So there, there's some sort of. It sounds like there's some sort of like peaceful reflection or quiet contemplation when the harp comes in. Why would the composer add that section in? And why, why men? Men usually have this sort of grounding sound, and these women, there, there is this sort of. Uh, it reminds me a lot of a uh, Final Fantasy VIII Medea's theme, like the the procession of of witches. There's very much this sort of like witch vibe some some sort of uh magical misdeeds that's what i that's what i hear it sounds like someone's up to no good it sounds like there is a cauldron or something you know and and what what do, what do the men signify when they come in like that it's almost like maybe something is about to happen and uh the men signify like a, a pause or a contemplation about it uh possibly and also notice that there's there's a build-up we're we're back into this this sort of there the, the, there's that peaceful harp usually means peace and uh, sort of like you know holiness or 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 stillness there's a, there's a build up as we return back to that A section if that was a B section and uh, I'm curious to see where we go from here. There's a ramping up. Listen to those men.
That's such a cool bum 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 bum. There's this uh, we're on a it's a locomotion, and uh, yeah, it's cool. That's interesting. So in this particular recording that I'm listening to, it almost sounds like this is like an orchestral concert where there are different movements. And so that was movement number one. And then now we're moving into movement number two and then whatever comes after phase, phase, the second phase, phase two. And uh, you find this very often in, in, in um, compositional works uh, in symphonies, uh, in Mozart concertos, for instance, there'll be allegretto, you know, there's a faster section, allegretto, vivace, which is kind of fast, then there's a lento section, and then, and they're all split up and you sort of just, it's like, there's like a, like a conclusion, and then we move on to the next thing. Sometimes there are story beats that go along with that. If it's a symphonic poem, like uh, like um, like in Berlioz or in Strauss, but generally like these, this sort of separation of movements is very common in classical music. So it's kind of cool that this, even though I mean, this sound, this again, my whole spiel with this whole channel is that all this music, a lot of this music, could be played in a symphony hall, and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between whether it was some new composer. It, it, it's it's all it's all it can it can play with the with the big leagues it can play with with everybody else it can play with beethoven it can play with verdi it can it can play with with mendelssohn it can play with you know carl orff in carl orff who wrote carmina burana i mean this doesn't sound that different from that <sighs> tension Electric guitar? This is badass. Those are those strings.
How sick is that? That is cool. You know what's also cool about all this? Adding a soprano soloist to this really enhances it because yes, we have the chorus, which is amazing. Uh, what's, what's so cool about using the soprano is that it, where it sits in it, it's in her range, it actually sounds like a mezzo at first. There's a lot of chest and, and that's actually, by the way, that's a lyric soprano. When there's a bit of heft to the sound, that's uh, that's considered a, a lyric soprano. Every every voice type, whether it's soprano, mezzo, countertenor, tenor, baritone, bass, baritone, bass, there are subsets of those titles. So sopranos have, you know, dramatic, coloratura, lyric, spinto, spinto meaning pushed. There are all these different um, sub uh, sub sub classifications of voice. When I was singing, and, and you heard that clip Nessun Dorma earlier when I first, when I make my intro, Nessun Dorma is from the opera Turandot or Turando by Puccini, and that is a spinto tenor role. It requires a lot of energy, a lot of gas. It requires a lot of pressure right here. We have these two vocal folds right here, obviously vocal cords. We all have those, but singers, we we learn to thread the needle, especially tenors, which is what I was. We learn to thread the needle so that we put a lot of pressure on our vocal cords and that's what that's what creates the tone and that's what creates the sound and then there's uh, there's a whole component about breath support and then you come up here and there's this whole thing here that happens when you go up to the soft palate right here which is where your soft palate is and you come out the mouth and this requires great deal of strength in the abdomen to expand your breath laterally and forward so you tank up and then you when you go up in the in the upper register as a man anyway what you're doing is you're you're slowly releasing air and keeping tension here um it's called appoggio which means in italian means to lean and what you're doing is you're essentially you're essentially controlling the release of air while uh while air is pushing through the vocal folds this is a very reduced version of that and i'm not a pedagogue so don't don't quote me but so in in this in this particular melody when we're listening to this as you notice Da, 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 da. as she increases and goes higher and higher and higher she has to work harder and harder in order to produce that sound and in order for, to, for her to continue to to spin her air and to continue her breath to keep moving that's called vibrato vibrato it means vibrated in italian and as we get higher there are multiple things that happen that elicit a strong emotional response from you a listener first of all there's the power you know, something like this, you, you, she could clearly sing over an orchestra because because of all the factors I just described. High notes, especially in men anyway, are a highly pressurized experience. So there's a lot of, of pressure here. In order to get out like this, there's a lot of pressure that has to come out. When we're in our lower register, we can really lean in on the breath a little bit. You know, it's something like... It's it's uh it's very easy. It's not difficult. It's not it's not pressed. It's not heavy. It's not it's not tight. But if I go up, my chords, <clears throat> my chords are coming together, and and there's there's air coming through them. But but the 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 space for the air to come through is very very tiny. And so, anyway, that's all technical stuff. But what it does is it it, it high notes are such a unnatural thing especially for men but in general when we hear high notes as an audience we're always like whoa like how is it possible that this person can produce this sound and and wow like that's supernatural because we don't we don't hear that in our day-to-day -day, um, lives and it's really cool that in this piece the soprano probably signifies la signora and so and that's her song you know the chorus is is, is sort of setting the scene for us whether it's in her layer, in her, you know, sort of like uh, doing some sort of battle. When the soprano comes in, that is actually, in my opinion, La Signora speaking to us, the audience, whatever she may be saying. There's that sort of, when we get up to the top register like that, it's sort of this passionate plea or this passionate cry. And it's really, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, it's incredible. This is the first track I've heard. I've heard true opera in a video game soundtrack where I felt, wow, like that's, that's what I know how to do. That that's, that's what I've grew up on. That's what I understand. That's what I learned. I love hearing it. And, and I can't, I can't believe that this, this piece exists in Genshin Impact. It's incredible. So clearly this is a soundtrack and, uh, and music that I should be listening to. So 
anyway, yeah, that's that's it for me. I, I was really excited to check this out, and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. I'm going to release videos twice a week. One of the videos will be something that I want to listen to, and then the second video will be a request. I think that's going to work out for a little bit for now, and then things will change as as we go. But I hope you enjoyed this, and thank you so much, and talk to you later. See ya.